So before we talk about non-lethal deer management strategies, we're going to talk a little about me. I, I was born and raised in South Florida. We did not have a deer problem. And the only deer I knew of was Bambi. And I assumed he just hung out with his woodland creatures, causing no harm. I didn't really hear about Lyme disease. Chronic wasting disease wasn't a thing. Ticks weren't a thing. It just wasn't discussed. So I moved up to Maryland in 2010. And that's when I started hearing about deer vehicle collisions, ticks, Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spot fever. Still didn't know really what that was. And uh, as time progressed, I learned that deer are the most destructive forms of wildlife, and they need to be stopped. So there are three management tools. Deer fencing is the most effective means for deer management, following deer-resistant plants, which aren't so resistant, and uh, deer repellents, which pretty much do nothing, but we'll get to that. There are many reasons why people are choosing to install deer fencing. The first is obviously for land protection. It doesn't matter if it's for forest protection, gardens, farms, vineyards, orchards. We want to protect what is ours, not the deer. Tick disease prevention, white-tailed deer, they're the number one carriers of ticks in the United States. We want to keep our family members protected from deer, not just wildlife encounters, but also because of ticks. Same goes for pets. Uh, many people install deer fencing, not just for dog leisure, but also to keep them protected from wildlife encounters and attacks. Chronic wasting disease, especially with deer farmers, um, traffic control, and uh, tea, uh, tree guards, tree protection. So there are many things that you can ask yourself before buying deer fencing. The first is, you know, which type of animals are bothering my garden? Is it just a deer problem? Is it a combination, deer, rabbits, squirrels, groundhogs? What is my budget and what type of, uh, you know, land am I working with? What is the soil like? How much acreage do I have to work with? So these are all important questions to ask. There are two types of deer fencing that are popular and practical. The first is plastic. Plastic ranges from four foot to 15 feet high. Seven and a half to eight foot high is the sweet spot for deer fencing in general. This type of material is lightweight it's flexible, it's easy to manage, and it's meant for light to moderate deer pressure, non-chewing animals. Uh, something like a, a rabbit or a groundhog, they're going to easily chew through this. It's not really worth it. But if it's for tree protection, many, uh, many forestry managers, they use this to wrap around trees to protect uh, you know, the tree bark from the rutting. It has a five to 20 year lifespan. So it depends on you know, your goals, again. And uh, it has a 650 to 950 pound breaking strength. We also have an electric, or not an electric, an elk fence, which is this one. And you can come look at these on the table. Elk fence has a 1400 pound breaking strength. They're for elk and large animals and also deer control, and we have a new 950-pound uh, breaking strain plastic fence with a 20-plus year lifespan, and that is on the table as well. Metal fencing um, is really most effective if it has a PVC coating. This is available in two foot to eight foot high. And so the reason why metal fencing is better than a plastic fence is because of the PVC coating, it is chew proof, or chew resistant rather. This is for your heavy deer pressure, your rabbits, your groundhogs, your coyotes, anything that's going to chew or dig. This is the type of material you need. It's UV resistant, it's virtually invisible from 20 feet away, and it's longer lasting than your typical plastic fence. It's gonna be 20 to 30 year lifespan. Hmm. Electric fence. I'm on the fence about electric. I, uh, yeah, I know. 
I'm full of them. Um, it can be a primary or a secondary barrier. It's mainly good for bear deterrence. It's okay for deer, but I think deer are just going to jump around it, really. Uh, Wisconsin DNR did implement that deer farmers need electric fencing for a secondary barrier. And um, I don't know if Maryland DNR is going to jump on board with that. No. Uh, but it lasts between five to 30 years. It's inexpensive compared to other types of fencing. And um, you know, it's, it requires a little bit of maintenance, but it's, it's still a good fence choice. Here's your cost analysis. Uh, for about a seven and a half to eight foot high plastic fence, you're looking at about $1.10 a foot. For a metal fence, you're looking at about $2.30. Wood is more expensive. Wood is also going to splinter off eventually. Uh, chain link, chain link is better for dog fencing, but not really for deer fencing. Split rail and electric, again, is the cheapest, but I think it comes with its problems as well. Deer resistant plants, this is a secondary barrier. Uh, geraniums, marigolds, daffodils, any sorts of herbs, um, you know, thyme, rosemary, garlic, peppers, all that. These are great as a barrier around a deer fence, but deer are, they're stubborn and they're going to eat. And if they want it badly enough, which they usually do, they're going to go for it. And so uh, we just can't rely on these types of plants. Deer repellents, again, they're pretty much useless. Um, we can keep the deer away by hopefully telling them that coyotes and wolves are nearby with certain urines or repellents. But the truth is, is that within 15 to 30 days, they're going to disappear because of the heavy rains, the heat exposure, especially in the summertime. And so they're just not that effective. So to eliminate some of the cost with installation, you can do it yourself. We work on a ground sleeve system that does not require concrete. So you dig a hole, you drop your ground sleeve in about 30 inches. You drop your post into your ground sleeve, and then you zip tie your fence mesh to each post about 15 to 20 feet apart. Uh, if there is sagging at the top of the fence, then you can apply tension wire. And um, we have gates, corners, and ends. These are really good systems that will last at least 15 to 30 years. So again, deer fencing, it's the most effective means for deer control. Um, deer resistant plants, I just wouldn't count on them, but they can be a secondary barrier. Deer repellents, I would use it really as a third barrier, but they're just not that effective compared to deer fencing. Yes, it does. So the most popular is um, actually the steel hex web. It's a PVC coated chicken wire, essentially. It's a 20 gauge steel. And um, I think actually this is my favorite type of fence. I think that the plastic are good fences, but I think you might as well just upgrade and manage the deer, but also other critters that you know, can be bothering the landscapes. <laughs>